GSXR 600 tank I just got done doing for a customer I had to bring it inside to record it because it was just too shiny outside couldn't see it at all it's a bit, fairly easy process and I'm going to be doing each part piece by piece you know normally you paint the bike all at once but this is just for uh, informational purposes like an instructional tutorial on how to do this step by step the right way alright this here is the fender I'm going to be doing up for you guys to show you It's a fairly small fender, so I'm not going to be putting any designs or anything on it because you really won't be able to see it. Only this front portion shows right here, probably about that much. So you can't see it. So, no designs for this, but it does need to be clean. It's dirty. This part here, I find it best to uh, use uh, like dish soap and water and clean it out real good. Scrub it, scrub it real good, get all the dirt and grime out of there. And then after that, we'll scuff it and hit it up with some uh, uh, wax and grease remover. Gotta have wax and grease remover before you prime it. All right, so we got it cleaned up as good as possible now. Uh, as we go along here, I'm gonna show you guys everything we need to do this. This way here, uh, you can go to the store and get everything done. Every buy everything yourself and do everything yourself. Uh, right now I have to paint in here because uh, we're building a brand new paint shop so about another week or so all the videos will start coming from there hopefully about a week and so actually this is better for do it do it yourself purposes anyway you know you just find an area or room and sheet it with plastic good exhaust fans tape everything off nice so uh, no dust particles flying uh, okay, so the next step now is to scuff everything. Be using these pads here, these little scuff pads. You can get everything that we use. I will tell you where to get it from and roughly how much it costs. These pads I got from CarQuest. You can get them from AutoZone and places like that. I think they're like 50 cents to a dollar a piece, something like that. So next we're going to take these and start by scuffing it. Just scuff it, take the clear coat down a little bit, you know, scuff the clear coat up real good, it gets real hazy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and scuff that and then we'll all get right, to the next so we got it all scuffed up now. Just, uh, you can see how much hazier it is now rather than, you know, you can't see the clear. And now, uh, at this point is where you use your wax and gle grease remover and wipe it all down. When you wipe it down too, you'll be able to see... You'll be able to see some, uh, if there's any clear, anything clear, uh, any high spots you missed. So, once you do that, you know, and if there are, you just go over it again until it's all pretty much, uh, you know, uh, scuffed up pretty good. Sorry for the uh, bad camera angle, I'll put it on the tripod soon. Alright, um, I have this crap from back in the day when I first started messing with uh, Hydro Graphics. It's the greaser. It's from uh, Dip Wizards. All they do is rebottle the shit you buy in AutoZone. It's $14 for a big bottle. But this is all I got. I gotta go get more. I ran out, so I found this. I have this. Dip Wizards sucks, by the way. Um. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down, and then I'll show all you right, So it's all wiped up and cleaned up. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, use a tack cloth. These here you can get at uh, Walmart. They're like 50 cents, 60 cents for a tack cloth. And you just wipe it off. It gets all the particles and dust and uh, everything like that off there. So you get a nice clean coat. And uh, do this before your primer. All right, we're gonna do that, and then I'll show you. We're not ready for primer. Uh, 
I'm using this primer here because I'm doing piece by piece, so I don't feel like messing up the gun each time. So I'm just using spray primer. It works really good. You sand it down when you're done, you get a nice, perfect finish. Uh, you get this at your local paint store. It's like 15 bucks a can. Um, the most important thing, every time you use it, even when you first use it, you want to hold it upside down and spray it. Maybe I can show you. And spray it. I gotta put plastic down here until you get a clear, well I already did it, but you'll get a clear spray. If you don't do that, then you'll get blotches and it'll fuck your paint up and it'll look like shit. So don't do it, or you're gonna be doing a lot of extra work you don't have to do. All right, so I'm gonna primer this now. All right, we're getting ready to spray the uh, primer now. Nice, well, three coats, nice and light. Don't gotta be too, too heavy unless you're trying to build it up. But still, you don't want any runs. If so, you can sand them off. Remember, hold the can upside down. Always wear a respirator. Shit will kill you. So now, just to speed it up a little, I'll take the heat gun, put it on a low setting, and just hit it with the heat gun. Helps it dry and cure a lot faster. Keep in mind, if uh, you're doing any designs with tape or anything, you never ever use the heat gun because it will melt the adhesion or the adhesive on the tape to your paint. So you just have to be patient when you're doing design. If not, you'll fuck up your whole design and that's it. If there's any people out there saying I'm doing shit wrong, well, I don't give a fat baby's dick because uh, uh, everybody on YouTube's a fucking pro these days. So. I don't give a shit. My painting method works and it looks pretty damn awesome and I haven't gotten one complaint from not one customer. I don't agree with this customer's choice of color, but to each their own. I don't give a fuck. You know? I charge 600 bucks for a paint job. $600. Where are you going to find that at? It's, it's perfected. You got perfection. So, uh, yeah, like I said, right now, this is even like in a do-it-yourself type of environment. Like, it's, uh, I got plastic hanging from walls, for Christ's sakes. This, this, is, this is my temporary paint booth. So, uh, let's see what happens. I mean, I can't wait for the other place to be done, so I'm, you know, in all honesty, there's no difference other than the regulations, you know, there's no dust, nothing on here, it's just the, the, the state regulations for, for paint and how to dispose of it and all that stuff. Not you get in trouble. But don't tell anyone breaking the law right now. Alright, that's enough. Alright. As primer. Look, this was a, a spray can. A spray can. There's no orange peel. Yes, you can't get orange peel in your primer. It's always why you want to wet sand it. Or at least go over with If you're not going to wet sand it, at least hit it with 800. Paint will stick to 800. I don't give a shit what shop says it's not going to stick, it's too smooth. They can kiss my ass. It sticks. You can you can do it with a thousand. Foose does and question foose. Had to bend that piece, I couldn't get it off. I didn't tape it off. I'm just gonna hit that little bracket black and brenda brack. It's for the uh, brake line. Fuck it. Yeah, it's not bad. Now time to sand it and Time to sand it and then tack it and uh, wax and grease remover and get ready for the first coat of black base. Alright, so 
it's all sanded up. Uh, I wiped it down with grease and wax remover and I tack cloth it. By the way, these are reusable. You can reuse your tack cloths. Don't throw them out. Um, now, we're about to mix paint. I'll show you how to do that. Alright, now to mix the paint. Uh, okay, this is your mixing cup. I'm trying to do this so you guys can see it. Now this paint here, this is the black base coat. This is a one to one ratio. So what that means is on the cup, you want to find the one to one, which is right here. And how this works is if you only need, if you need that much right there where that one is, you're going to put this much paint and that much fill the rest up to that one reducer. If you need that much paint up here where the five is, you're going to fill to this five with paint and then to that five with reducer. So right now, we only need two coats, so I'm going to do to the two, because this isn't very big fender, so actually I probably don't even need that much, but I really don't give a shit, so try and mix this so you guys can see it. Get ready to paint. All right, I gotta do it like this. I ain't got no stands or nothing here, so my options are limited. I gotta do it like this. I know it's ghetto as shit, but whatever. It's gonna work and it's gonna look good. So that's all that matters. Oh my god. You want your pressure about 35 psi. As you can see here, pressure about 35 psi. About 35 psi when you're spraying. That'd be a nice, nice spray there. So, here we go. 
Those coats nice and light. Special with candies. You really want to, this isn't candy, but you don't want to put a candy on heavy. Two coats of black are done. Getting ready to mix up uh, the orange to kind of, it, it's a metallic, so it gives it like a candy effect, but sort of. It's not a, it's not a crazy effect, but just to match the rest of the bike, it's gonna look good. Getting ready to mix that up now. I already showed you guys how to mix. Same thing, one to one ratio. That's it. One coat. One coat gives it a nice dusting. Uh, nice dusting. Uh, the camera makes it look like shit, but it looks really good, really smooth. One dusting. Then when you clear it, it brings out the color like crazy. No orange peel. None. Not a once it's cleared it'll shine. But once all the pieces are done on wet sand and buff. It's gonna look clear, good clear though. See the lighting, this camera makes it look like poor coverage. Like you can see like spots and stuff, but they're really not there. It's just the lighting, like you know, it looks at the bottom right here, it looks dark. You know, but as you come up, it look, you know, see it up there. Like, it just shifts. So, I mean, it's really good coverage for one coat. You know, these are always a pain in the ass to get in, but got in there nice and good, no runs. It look, looks pretty spectacular. You know, again, sorry about the bad camera. Like, I'm not used to doing shit like this, man. I'm just trying to help everybody else out. I learned a couple years back, so people help me so now I want to help all you guys you guys can do it at home if not send it to me I'll do it for you I don't give a shit I'll give you a nice job but all right um I'm gonna take these because I do I do four coats of clear so uh I'm probably making you guys dizzy as fuck um get in the house stupid um, what am I doing? Oh, clear coat. Alright, got a, the hardener. This is the hardener. This is the clear coat. Uh, this shit is like six bucks, I think. Seven bucks. And this was like 30. This does a pretty good job. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, PPG's. It's like Blue Point is the snap on. It's PPG's lower brand, I guess you could say. But I tell you what, for the price, it covers nice, man. It really does. It ain't bad at all. And I'm really impressed with the uh, the primer as well. The primer is really good. That sprayable primer, spray paint. I tried it for the first time because I don't want to mess the gun up. Oh yeah, I have two reducers here too because I like to use. 
the brand reducer. Like I probably could have swapped, swapped, swapped them, but um, I like to keep both of them. I like to keep with the same brand, just cause you know. This is a pretty shitty paint environment. Every time before I paint it, put my plastic back down, get the exhaust fans rolling, and then have my air filter, my in induction, that filter, and then all my lighting and stuff. A uh, heat gun. Heat gun's a lifesaver, man. You blast through coats. But, all right, I'm gonna mix this up. Oh, this clear, every clear I used, I use, I've used mostly this, but I've used Matrix 2. The ratio is 4 to 1. So again, you find your 4 to 1 right there. Right there, 4 to 1. And again, if you want, you bring it up to your 4 right there, right where my thumb is. And then with the hardener, you go to the next 4. Remember again, like... Uh, whatever you fill it to whatever number you fill it to like when you're doing your ratios you're gonna stick with that number so if you fill it to four with your clear coat fill it to four with your hardener all right oh I'm on two to one ratio uh, same 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 concept though you know and if you got three things you know if it's four to one to one or eight eight to one to two ratio like this you know, you do your two, two, and then two. Stay all with your tools, twos. I know I'm probably, you know, a lot of you guys already know this shit, but there's a lot of people out there that don't know this. So, they gotta learn. We had to learn, they gotta learn. All right, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna yeah, mix up the clear and get ready to spray this shit. And then, and then I'll give you guys a video of the uh, the bike later on once the bike is completely done because this this piece here this is uh that's the same for for uh, you know all the other ports oh I showed you how to do this is the same for every other port and yes I know I'm aware I didn't get behind there I didn't paint all of it I did paint around my edges though so the paint has something to grab to you don't have to paint the whole fender. You don't have to paint underneath. I don't give a shit. I've done plenty of them. I know. I've washed them. I've abused them. Uh, fucking, they don't, it doesn't come off. It will not come off. You're fine. You're just wasting paint. Um, now, don't get me wrong. If you can see it, if you can see it on the bike, then yes, do yourself a favor and paint it. But none of this you could see. Actually, this is, this right here is pretty much the only part you could see that and right here down so there's nothing else you could see nothing the way it's tucked in there oh, sorry about the camera angle, but nothing else you could see so anyways um all right i'm gonna get the clear coat mixed clear it shoot it whatever you want to call it and then uh we'll get back to the next part okay here's the first coat here's the first coat of clear Looks good. Looks nice and shiny. See that light messes it up. Looks like there's spots, but as you can see when it shifts, oh man, that one coat is pretty dry. I've been letting it sit. I use the uh, heat gun. It's pretty dry. And we're gonna get it. Clear coat's a little pain to get a little bit of orange peel with it, but it's still not too bad. The wet sand and buffing will take that right out. Take it right out. Yeah, that looks fresh. That looks real fresh. Ooh, it's one I can't wait to see this thing all done. I'm not crazy about the colors. And it looks a lot different through the lens. You know, a lot different. Like in person, it just looks way better. It pops. But, you know, I think once the bike's all together and then we, you guys see the finishing, finishing touch, you'll understand. But, you know, uh, I'll explain a couple more things. I'm going to put a list of where to get everything, exactly how much it is, and then I'm also gonna put a spot, you know, I'll write for, uh, put some notes, so you guys can remember, you know, this way here it's easy for you guys, and you don't have to do a lot of guesswork and go to all different, different uh, people's YouTubes, you know, kind of like a one-stop shop deal. 
I'm gonna do another one to show you guys how to set up the gun and uh, kind of you know just 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 so there's no guesswork set up the gun tell you how to paint I'll show you my my technique my style and you know it's really easy to pick up really easy um, number one thing though when you're painting is make sure you have proper equipment make sure you're wearing the gloves and you have a mask you'll you'll kill your lungs and, and your body if you don't and if you ever spilled the clear coat on your hand or on anywhere on your body in open pores after a minute or two it starts to burn so just make sure you know like in my shop I wear full gear full everything to be as safe as possible but alright uh, I'm gonna let this dry I got three more coats I usually wait about 10-15 minutes even with the heat gun to lay on the coats and then uh, after that fourth coat man oof it looks good all right here it is four coats all done looks really good really good oh a fucking bug landed right there oops fucking camera yep I'm gonna get him out of there do what I gotta do but matches up with the other piece perfectly. I don't like painting things at different times because sometimes the colors just don't match up, you know, like it's but this is this type of color here, it's you know, it's can't really mess it up. So but again I wanted to do it like this for instructional purposes and you know people take make their videos and they do all their pieces and it's just hard to keep track sometimes I think. I noticed it was frustrating for me years ago. But Man, I'll tell you, as long as, long as uh, you take your time and do everything right, man, all right, you guys uh, be good to go. You know, the product behind us here is all finished now. It was, uh, give you guys a small taste of uh, what it takes and what's required as far as uh, painting and, you know, all, all the steps so it's easier. Um... One another another important thing is when you when you go to purchase your paint, make sure you get these for your base coats, your clear coats, your candies. They're called TDS sheets, technical data sheets, and they provide a lot of information for you and they're free. If not, you could just pull up your numbers to your paint if you happen to forget them and you can pull them up online. What they do is they uh they tell you your flash times, uh, how long of a period of time between each coat you should wait before recoating or, or spraying your next coat um, um, how many how many coats you want to apply of that in particular base coat or clear coat um, your mixing ratios like your one to one two to one four to one whatever it might be you start your project you want Make sure you have everything like, um, you know, your sandpaper, your your scuff pads, your lacquer thinner, your paints, your primer, your clear coat. Um, again, this you need to have these so you can follow your flash times properly. Um, other than that, man, like there, there's really not much to it. It's easy. Um, I'll do videos to show how to set up your guns. And I have a snap-on gun, but I recently bought a, uh, a set of Huskies. It's a two-gun set, and it comes with everything you need, like everything. It comes with everything, regulators, everything, two of everything, too. It was $79.99. Best deal ever. The, they, they spray better than my Snap-on. And for 70 bucks for two guns, and it comes with a hard case, everything you need. It's great. It's perfect. There's no need to go with anything more. But the spray nozzles are 1.4, which is pretty much it. I put all three, all three, uh, all three uh, paints through them. Your primer, your base coat, and your clear coat, and they all laid perfectly smooth. Oh, another important thing is if you go to make a homemade booth, like this is kind of half-assed for now, but, you know, I'm not investing a bunch of money into something when I'm doing my other one, so whatever. 
I just all is good but a fucking bug. Piece of shit. Yeah, so I mean hopefully this video made it so you don't have to ask me or anybody else, but uh give it a shot, see what you can do, why not? Fuck it. If you can do it yourself, save yourself the money, go for it. And uh that's it. See you guys in the next video.